Hi, my name is Jesse Lynn. And I'm Angela Lynn. Welcome back to another episode of But Where Are You Really From? Today we have another installment of Go Home We're Drunk, aka we drink on the show and discuss Asian content. What's up? Oh, um, nice and <laughs> and Jesse literally just spilled on himself <laughs> yet again. Mm. Um, and Jesse, I'm so proud of you today. You're not drinking out of a candle. Well, look, that was it. <laughs> I thought it was going to work, and it didn't work. So I'm drinking out of a nice ceramic cup that my friend it's beautiful. made for it's me. Beautiful. It is very beautiful. And is it whiskey again? Yeah, because I don't actually have... I have, like, a bunch of alcohol in my apartment, but nothing really to mix it with. So oh, okay. I'm not going to do... Like, I'm not going to drink a vodka soda in my apartment, so... Why not? <laughs> vodka soda is, like, a going out kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. You're not pre-gaming a rager. <laughs> <laughs> on a Monday, I mean, I could be, but I'm. Am I that kind of girl yet? No. You could be. I could be, but that's a lot of work. Yeah. Um, and I'm just drinking another one of those island beers Yay. that I was drinking last time because you know I got a six pack and I, <laughs> I don't drink that much either anymore, especially at home. So it's kind of just like, well, there's more of this. <laughs> a beer actually <laughs> sounds very refreshing right now. It's you know I think we talked about this, but the reason I like beer is that there's such a nice association with kind of like you had a long hard day of work and you're like you just want to relax and you just like crack open a can of beer or like take the cap off that bottle of beer and that sound is so like relaxing to me it's a, that like release of the carbonation yeah yeah it's like okay the day is done oh my <laughs> time God. to read that budweiser marketing has done a number on you is that really from bud is that <laughs> well where i that feel sound? like well, no, like, all of them have, like, a, especially the canned ones, they always yeah. have that noise where it's, like, psh, But I do it. think you're right. There was, like, a marketing campaign in, like, the early aughts or whatever, early 2000s that they tried to, like, coin. Or not coin, but, like, Trademark associate the sound. Their, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. their beer with that sound. Yeah. The visceral senses. Or maybe I'm, no, we're mixing shit up. That was Pepsi. Bitch, that was like Pepsi Cola, and they're like, you know, like um, Britney Spears opening the can and stuff. That sound is associated with, like, that's that the company for, that tried to do that. They didn't do that for beer, too? Like, don't they have the, like, opening and then the bottle cap falling and then, like, clattering? Yeah, I mean, maybe. Maybe, but I think the, like, classic can open every Yeah, yeah, it's the Coke can. The Cow Coke Pepsi. Yeah. Whatever. Anyways, beer's great. Um, any hoots. <laughs> so today we are discussing Train to Busan. Choo choo. And some of y'all, before you shit on us already, being like, that's just so old. It is from 2016. Yes. But it's a classic. I mean, classic is kind of gratuitous given how semi-recent it is but it is <laughs> one of the like first korean movies that was getting praise back in the day um and jesse had watched it before but i had not watched it before so it was kind of like a perfect excuse oh yeah i know it was like everyone and their mom was like you need to watch Rainbow Basan," and it was like you know those movies where at or tv shows after a certain point of everyone telling you to watch it and you just don't watch yes. it yes yes yeah. It's like, yes. I'm never going to watch this. So this was like a perfect opportunity to be like, okay, I got to actually watch this. Um, that. And as we know, we in that Korean how you wave right now where all the Korean content Dustin is Dustin off that word. Yeah, Leslie, <laughs> get at me. <laughs> we learned that from my friend Leslie in the BTS episode that we did. Um, but yeah, Korean shit is taking over. And the more content comes out the more i'm like oh there's so much like crossover with stuff so train to busan the main protagonist gong yu the actor gong yu is in squid game he's the hottie that we talked about in squid game who does the slapping game he's also in silent sea another korean um show that came out of netflix recently where he's like the captain of a uh intergalactic mission thing um and i thought in, they were just going to the moon they were going to the moon but okay. it's a whole it's a whole thing okay um and in that show is the actress 
uh, Bay Duna, who is also in Kingdom, which is another zombie Korean show, and she's in Sensei and a bunch Amazing. of other stuff. Amazing. But she's I amazing. love her. I love her yeah. so much. Um, and then, of course, as most know currently, if you own Netflix, they are pushing the shit out of their new zombie Korean show, All of Us Are Dead, which is centered around a bunch of high schoolers and zombies. But I... I'm watching it, Jesse not watching it, but I like got over the hump of not initially being into watching high school kids, but I liked that they are kind of like self-aware because they like literally quote, they're like, oh, the, like all the shit happens in movies. Like this is literally like Train to Busan. Oh, <laughs> so it's very like, meta, like scream. Yeah. Okay. Yes, exactly. And okay. oh, Ramon and I just watched the the new scream. It's very mediocre, as one would expect. <laughs> I thought it was okay. I, thought I mean, it was yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's okay, but yeah. it's not. You're not gonna like remember it. Well, in yeah, a few I months. Mean, <laughs> it's the original is always like yeah. yeah, but yeah, I think I maybe will watch it. I was like debating, but then I'm like, I think I'm ready for some real emotional trauma. So I wanted to start watching Euphoria because everyone's Ooh, like, yeah, right, 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 everyone Euphoria. is talking about that. Show. I know. But I've only finished the first episode, and I'm like, it's a lot. Why is everyone <laughs> recently talking about it? Because that show's been out for a bit. Like, this is not the first season. This is like no, because the or new. Something? I think it's season two has just come out, so it's like releasing week by week. I think oh, or something okay, like that. Okay. Yeah, top of mind. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, and one more person that I was like, oh, okay. See, this is kind of like the nice part about being really late to watching older content is that I recognize people or like things that you maybe would not have recognized ahead of time. Mm -hmm. The baseball player guy um, with the girlfriend is the main brother actor in Parasite. I was like, oh, he looks Maybe. really familiar. No, oh, he is. I yes, looked yes, it yes, up. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the yes, baseball yes. dude. Yeah. He's the he's the main brother in Parasite. Um cuz I was like, man, that guy looks so familiar and then I googled the cast after watching Chain of Busan. Look how far yeah. he's gone. Come. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um I also like that whenever you work with like Netflix has this thing of like recycling the same people throughout like different <laughs> they shows. They love it. It's actually really funny because, as you said, like, you'll see, like, certain actors that play, like, secondary or tertiary parts, they, like, pop up in, yes. like, multiple TV series yes. in, in those, like, secondary tertiary. They're amazing, but, yeah. It's Sometimes they get leads. Like, Gong yeah. Yu was just a slapper guy in Squid Game. That's but true. <laughs> then He's he, the main. But he was yeah. already kind of, like, famous in yeah, his yeah, own yeah. right. It's true. Yeah. yeah. It's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's get into it, shall we? Do we do the plot summary first? Sure. Okay, well, spoiler alert, because, <laughs> I mean, this is so old. I hope you've watched it. If you have not, y'all. you'll watch it. But spoiler alert, um, it's a zombie movie, obviously, that takes place kind of on a train. I mean, like, it's like the train is the vehicle, but the zombie outbreak is happening, like, all throughout Korea. Mm-hmm. So how does it start? Basically, like, Gong Yu is like a failed parent, basically. Wow. Like he doesn't. Rough. Well, I mean, like, okay. <laughs> he is, he First is. of all, like he almost forgot his daughter's birthday. Yeah. He has like really bad conversations with his wife. His daughter well, wants to ex-wife. Ex-wife, yeah. excuse yeah. me. His daughter wants to take the train by herself to go see her mom. She's like and what she, seven? She's so small. She's yeah. so small. And and he forgot that he bought her a Nintendo Wii and then bought her another Nintendo Wii for her birthday. It's so sad. It's yeah. so sad. He's like the I classic mean, like yes. absentee parent. Exactly. Trope. He's the workaholic yeah. absentee parent. Um, yes. And so the the like general plot is that the daughter is like, it's my birthday tomorrow. I want to see mommy in Busan. And she's too little to take the train by herself, even though she keeps saying, I can just take it myself. And he's like, nah. So then he takes her on the train and then all the shit breaks out. And it's them and other people they meet on the train escaping this new zombie apocalypse that is imminently coming after them every minute, essentially, on the train. Yeah. So it just gets, like, successively worse as the train gets further along. Um and what happens like at some you know like the characters slowly die off throughout 
the train running and then at some point the train is not running <laughs> and then you get on a, <laughs> like it looks like a freight train engine that they got off got, got on and then like basically everybody dies except for the daughter and this pregnant lady and they finally make it to busan yeah that's pretty yeah. much it i will say um because I'm watching All of Us Are Dead right now, and I've watched Kingdom, and I've watched a lot, you know, Walking Dead, all these zombie things, watching this movie, the first 20 minutes, I was kind of like, ooh, am I going to be able to get through this? Like, I knew it was supposed to be, like, a really good movie, but I've, I'm have i a little zombied out, TBH, mm-hmm. and, like, I wasn't sure they were going to be able to pull the plot through for two hours, but they were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's strong. It's yeah. strong. So I'm impressed. I'm impressed. It's like the source material for a lot of these things now. It's yeah. true. You're right. Um, well, why don't we pick apart kind of like characters or like moments that kind of stood out to us. For me, one of the characters that stood out the most because, okay, let's be real. Yes, we've talked about Gong Yu. He's a hottie. I will say I think he's hotter in Squid Game and in Silent Sea than in Train to Busan. I think he got a little bit more ripped. Like he's like his face is a little bit more sculpted now in in like 2022 or whatever. Um, he's still hot in Train to Busan, but he's an asshole in the movie. He like, you know, there's character development, blah, blah. But let's talk about the real MVP, which is that um that meat meaty (laughs) daddy of the uh pregnant lady yeah the boxer he's 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 made a big time now too he was in um the eternals yes Mm -hmm. i didn't know that yeah until after but yeah okay yeah um but he was so endearing. It was yeah. kind of like, oh, yeah. unexpected. Because actually, I looked him up later. Yes, he's in e- Eternals, but um, kind of like in between other roles, he often plays kind of like tough guy type things, you know, like mafia boss type things. Um, so it's nice that he actually was like a really nice dude. And he's the real hero of this movie. Like he's yeah. the one who like beats down 80% of the zombies that they have to get away from. Yeah. He's the one with like courage and like compassion and like Gong Yu freaking closes the door on him and his pregnant wife in the beginning, letting them almost die from zombies. And then when the roles reverse in a later scene, he keeps the door open for Gong Yu's character. And I'm like, (laughs) you are the MVP. Well, let's talk about that moment. What would you have done in that situation? Would you have closed the door or would you have left it open? I mean, yeah, you're, I mean, you're not wrong. I think this is like a common question, which is like, it's similar to like the Holocaust. Would you have been like <laughs> helping, you know, Jews escape, or would you be renting them out? I think it's hard to say, honestly. Like, I think human instinct naturally is to like save yourself. Um, for me, I think it honestly would have depended on how close the zombies were behind them. Like, if it felt like there was like sufficient time to close the door behind them i think i would have tried but if it felt like they're like literally on their tail i don't know i probably would have closed it i will be really honest i think i probably would have just continued running i would not have even bothered with the i door. mean that's I true like, <laughs> like, that's I'm true because <laughs> there were so many moments so like boxer guys are definitely the most courageous and like you know trying to fight for the whole group of the entire movie but there were a ton of characters that like put themselves out there to help other people like all of the baseball team <laughs> because that um the secondary moment where the uh, boxer saves Gong Yu's character with the door, um, waiting on the door for him, all the baseball team is there kind of holding up the door, um, getting everyone out first. And then they all get attacked in the end and they all miss the train because they were helping everyone else. And so, yeah, it is kind of like, damn, like, which, who would we have been? Because, like, who what's inside a person that decides like i instead of just running for the train which is like my first instinct i'm gonna like stay back and help everyone else make it it's fight it's like the it's fight or flight right so like everyone who stayed back i guess picked fight and everyone who ran picked flight but yeah yeah well speaking of honestly like i i so i just rewatched it very quickly before this and there were, like, so many parts where I was, like, I'm gonna cry. Like, like, there are so many, like, cute, not cute, but, like, really sad, touching moments. Like, um, 
when Gong Yu's mom called him and she's like dying yeah. on the phone and their last her last thing was like take care of your daughter all she yeah. wants to do is get back home and um the part where the the big dude dies obviously because mm-hmm. his wife is very sad so they're like I like that it's not just like this one note like a uh, you know gut pounding terror it's kind of like there are these like really sad tender moments in the movie as well there are and it's yeah. actually it's pretty surprising because they go fairly deep into character development with such a chaotic background plot happening the whole time like you do get invested in a lot of characters in <laughs> It, like I said, in this chaos, like you'd think that it'd just be like kind of hard and everything. The, it'd just be like this zombie wash over where you're like, I don't care. I'm just following like Gong Yu's character because he's clearly the protagonist. But no, like you said, so one of my favorite tender moments is um, the boxer dude when he dies. It's because he's holding the door and he for everyone else and he already got bit by zombies. So he knew that he was going to die. And kind of prior to that scene, the wife, the pregnant wife, had made a joke about like, oh, my baby's name is Sleepy because the de- my her dad couldn't be bothered to come up with a name yet. And then when he's holding the door and it's clear that he's going to die and sacrifice himself, he shouts at his wife, like, the name of the baby because clearly he has thought about it. He's like, name her this. That's our baby's name. And I was like, oh. <laughs> crying (laughs) it's such a movie moment though i feel like again like thinking about what i would have done in the reality i would be like fuck, (laughs) and then like died okay (laughs) yes yes that is honestly the reality um this is not like a scary movie per se but i love scary movies and would like i said we just watched scream but um the remake but I've thought about this so many times that if I were in a horror movie, I would definitely die in the first, first act, for sure. (laughs) Like, I just don't, I have no, like, fantasy where I think that I'm, like, so good at my, like, instincts and, like, my reaction to scenarios that I would survive till the end. I would die. Unless someone else, like, unless this baseball team freaking helps me, like, throughout. I mean, in typical horror trope. Yeah, you would die because you're... Because I'm Asian. Because I'm a minority. (laughs) (laughs) Like, in a typical American movie horror trope, yeah, you would. You'd probably eat it first. Also, like, you're... I still feel like, even in other kinds of horror movies, I guess in this one, you kind of have, like... The people who survive are, like, the the innocents, if you will. Pregnant Mm. lady, small child. Mm. And everyone else is, like, you know, they, they don't survive, even though... I wouldn't say that they're, like, bad people. Like, most of them were pretty Some of good them people. were. Well, some of them <laughs> were bad people, but then, like, some of them were not. You're just, like, you're, you know, your average people that got mowed down. Yeah. Well, something else that stuck out at me was you mentioned, like, if we were in a horror movie, we would die first because minorities, right? And we've talked about this in other episodes before, too, which is, like, in America, we're all obsessed with race and whatever because that's the main thing that kind of like divides us amongst different groups of people here. But in homogenous societies, like most of the Asian countries, it's not race because there often is mostly just one race. It's a lot socioeconomic, you know, stratifications. And I definitely saw that in this movie too. And I don't know if you noticed it again, this was kind of like me watching it now after having seen Parasite and having seen like other other movies where they're making social commentary on the socioeconomic classes and that huge divide. I'm like, oh, I see a little bit of this in Train to Busan because the main bad guy is the like COO of some big company who's like really out for number one, like the entire time. He's just like, get me the fuck out of here to the conductor. He's like, let's leave everyone behind. And he likes pushes people in front of zombies so that he can escape. He's the off, like the worst human. And then, of course, he dies in the end, whatever. But it's, like, no surprise that, yeah, they pit, like, essentially the highest class person as, like, the bad guy. Um, And then, like, Gong Yu isn't that great of a 
his character isn't like that great in the beginning. He gets better, but like he's a fund manager and they kind of like imply that like some of their investments may have led to the outbreak that caused the zombie apocalypse. And then um, there's a homeless guy too that is one of the characters and like Gong Yu's character's natural instinct is to like fuck him over and like leave him behind, but then he like stays till the end. But then he still ends up sacrificing himself for everyone else. And I was like, no, <laughs> like, I thought this was going to be a whole social commentary of like, we need to help the poor or whatever. But then he still dies to save the pregnant lady and the child in the end. Well, yeah, I mean, it definitely there's like a morality story there because of how oh, yeah. the characters backgrounds are, are set up and everything. Yeah. Um, I just think that, like, I also, I think there are also these, like, really fun, small, fun moments in the movie, um, like, when they first start seeing reports of the riots, and you remember those two old sisters? There were two oh, yeah. grand, and mm-hmm. the, one of them was, like, one of them was, like, if this was in the old days, they would have been sent to a re-education yes. camp, and I was, like, oh, my God. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, there were a lot of little fun moments like that. Yeah, I thought it was just, I thought it was very funny and, like, self-referential. Well, so that actually reminds me of All of Us Are Dead, because, like I said, they said, like, Train to Busan um, and stuff like that. I just want to <laughs> say, though, like, can we talk about how their train runs much better in the zombie apocalypse and the trains here in the U.S. too in, like, normal <laughs> State. Well, they were, <laughs> if you notice the train type, it was more like the Shinkansen in Japan. Like a like bullet the, train. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but still, yeah, like... Yeah. Ooh, okay, something else I want to talk about was the zombies themselves. Can we just talk about, like, every zombie show or movie kind of portrays them slightly differently? Yes. Yes. And I'm like... Every time I see it differently, I'm like, what would happen in real life? Like, if zombies were real, right? I'm like, which one would they be? Because there's so many different tactics that you would have to employ depending on, like, what type they are. So in All of Us Are Dead, they're sound-based zombies. Yes, they can see you, but they're sound-based largely. And in this, they're largely sight-based because they make a whole thing about like when they go into dark tunnels and they're kind of blind. And then only in those situations, then if you throw something and it makes a sound, it will like distract them. But usually they're like, they're visual, like they see you and then they go after you. Um, Any thoughts on that? I feel like there's just so many, I'm like, hmm, which one's like more realistic? (laughs) Well... I think there are some general rules to zombie apocalypse. I think, like, top of mind for me is, you, well, not senses-wise, but you obviously cannot be bitten, scratched, or otherwise have your innards come in contact with any zombie fluid. That's, like, a game over. Sure. You should be able to run fast enough to run away from a zombie. And those are and and generally like the third rule is that zombies will usually die if you like cut off their head or like shoot them in the brains yeah. or something like that. I will say, if the purpose of a zombie virus is to transmit the zombie virus, then what would make a real zombie most viable is by sight because I feel like normal humans are very sight based. Like your other senses suck, you wouldn't be able to really hunt a person by just here right well i think the reason why so many shows and movies focus on the other senses is because they're trying to create a stronger division between what is human and what is zombie and essentially what's not human is animalistic right and Mm -hmm. animals have really strong senses that are Mm -hmm. not based just on sight like it's sound and smell and all that stuff so like there's it's I'm just lumping zombie things in now, but um, in All of Us Are Dead, there were a couple moments where I was like, what? That doesn't make any sense to me, which is like in Walking Dead, I distinctly remember in the pilot um, that main character, I'm like I purged all these characters from my memory because I'm Rick. like, I need Rick. Rick, yeah, Rick. Um, covers I need more whole- memory. <laughs> Delete. <laughs> exactly. I remember you opened your task manager and you're like, end these processes. <laughs> I do that all the time, though. Because, no, straight up I do. Because uh, one of my high school friends that I actually still like, um, one time she asked me, like, oh, do you remember this person from high school? I'm like, no, I literally purged everyone from high school's names out of my head that, like, are not from 
friends that I still like care about. So I'm like, I've met so many people in my life, like between moving a bunch of places, like why would I, <laughs> why would I dedicate memory for that? So yes, I, I actually constantly kind of like unintentionally purge things from my memory. But anyways, Rick, Walking Dead and the pilot. One of the things he does that I'm like, oh, that's so smart. And I would definitely do that is he covers himself in zombie guts and like, and lays down so that they can't tell if they're smell based, like senses based, right? Because they'd be like, oh, you smell like one of us. So meh. Um, versus like, they don't do that in either of these, like in Train to Busan or All of Us Are Dead, because that's not like the main, I guess, sense that they're focused on. But it just, it makes sense to me that like, if this were in real life, and you smelled like them, and you like, play dead or or start walking like them or whatever it would throw them off but i don't know i'm just speculating on things that aren't real <laughs> yeah i think it's 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 a little bit of a crapshoot honestly because i also like in the most real situation i think it would be like kind of like a rabies situation where you you know you just like attack anything you can i think if you have a, ra a rabid animal will still attack other rabid animals like it doesn't know that the other animal is rabid but if you play dead and you smell and you covered yourself because i think certain animals actually do that they like hide in the carcasses of other animals um Maybe. to like avoid a predator sometimes probably i don't think rabid animals attack well, I don't know. I'm not an expert on. <laughs> I'm on not that, a but... rabid animal, so I couldn't tell. I you. mean, yeah, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. Okay. I don't have rabies. Um, not yet. <laughs> <Just kidding>. <laughs> wow! I didn't know it was gonna be that kind of episode. <laughs> so we, um, yeah. What about? Is it too much to make a COVID connection? <laughs> Just kidding. Um. I don't know. Part of me is a little like, not that I think we're going to develop the zombie apocalypse, but Train to Busan is a little like funny to watch now in this current situation because in the world, in the potential future world where like bio warfare is like an actual thing that is happening, like it's just kind of like crazy to me because we're we're talking about like Train to Busan, it's like 2016, and like all these zombie things are like f super fake, right? That's like the fantasy. And then now it's like kind of scary that there is like a little bit of like, oh, uh, not zombies, but like a, a virus could mm -hmm. potentially be created by some, uh, you know, for ulterior motives, not COVID, whatever. You want to believe that, you want to know, yeah, yeah. but like it is possible to create a virus in a lab and like release it out into the oh, world. Oh, sure. I mean, like, I feel like it's well known that like CDC in Atlanta has like all these, they, they're storing all of these specimens yeah. that could like theoretically kill everybody in the United yeah. States if they were like accidentally somehow released or some bad player wanted to be involved or something like that. I just feel like it didn't really, maybe to your point, like it didn't really become so present for everyone globally until global pandemic happened. Um, where not only countries that we are not that geographically close to were affected, but like we are also affected. Because if you think about like like the original SARS, like that did spread a lot in Asia. And I think there were like pockets of outbreaks here as well, but it was never so, um, it was never so, I think popular is not the right word, but it was never so popular that everyone was yeah. somehow impacted by it. Yeah, it, would, it didn't spread so mass. Yeah. Um, and actually, that reminds me of the thing I wanted to say about All of Us Are Dead being very self-aware is that they uh, reference COVID-19. They're like, so they must have filmed, you know, during this time. But they were like, oh, as we remember from like what we learned from <laughs> swine flu and COVID-19 and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, hmm. So it's fun. I think it does show something very interesting, though, which is that, like, I feel like for the most of the movie, there was, like, a lot of denial happening. Like, not on the train itself, but kind of, like, when when you had the moments where the people were talking to, like, people not on the train. Mm -hmm. So, like, they were, I don't know, it just felt like, it felt like there was this slow uptake of what reality was and people, like, 
really hesitated to think that this was like a zombie outbreak or something oh like actually that. yeah totally and that reminds me of a different um thing that stood out to me that was another like commentary that they were clearly making is that there's like distrust in the government because i don't know if you remember since you had to <laughs> kind of skim through it for your rewatch but um when the news first breaks out the like i don't know i don't know who it's supposed to be i guess the president or something. some minister thing was like yeah the someone really of, high up yeah yeah but he he made a point to call it like oh some like political activists or something or like protesting um getting violent like he very quickly named it that as opposed to saying like we don't really know what this is or that it's like a disease-based thing and i was like ha 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 look at this little commentary <laughs> on like political agendas i just it's such it's so interesting to like again look at what's happening in a movie and then think about what would happen in real life and mm -hmm. like all of the challenges that people face in such a situation because i can see why you wouldn't tell the public the truth because if you were to tell the public like there's a virus spreading we don't know what it is we don't know where it came from we don't know how to get it that would cause enormous public Bruh, you just described panic. covid though <laughs> yeah but like but <laughs> i feel like so the thing is that like that's not my function there's a whole bureaucracy of people communications public policy like that's their function so like they should be able to figure that like the right mix of it out if we believe anyways that's just my point but i, I just it's so interesting because it's like there's so many different um ways people could respond to something like this and i think that the movie encapsulates all of these different responses the different kinds of people you might meet so you know you like the coo kind of villain person yeah. you're talking about but it's very interesting because there's like the cast represents kind of a wide gamut of people you might encounter in such a situation it's very realistic it's very realistic and yeah i mean I keep except for back the train service that's not realistic i don't the believe that that train <laughs> it's like, too high quality <laughs> i mean i guess korea is like not that big but still how you run a bullet I think train? Asia's in... Asia's trains are better in general than than ours in the U.S. We, I mean, we'll see. yeah, yeah. We've but, been uh, we were duped by the hyperloop. That oh my never gosh! Was. <laughs> I, and I just want to comment I, again. I want to comment on it because it's just such a so far away from reality. But like the fact that they have attendants that are like, "Welcome to the train that you can sit over here," like. They're, like, so nice, and they're actually, like, helpful. That's not... Jesse, <laughs> I'm going to break something to you. I think the U.S. is just kind of the, like, pits in all of this. Because, not to say they it was the same level of service, but because I just came back from Europe, um, where we spent the holidays... It's very with, that, too. ...with Ramon's yeah. parents. Yeah. And we took the train a lot between cities. Um, the Renfe, which is also their high-speed train. It's not as fancy as the bullet train in Train to Busan. But... They have attendants. They have attendants. And they, they're, you know, they have the uniforms. They're also responsible for, like, you know, you. And they ha come through with, like, um, you know, headphones for the movie or, like, selling snacks with the cart. So I think it's just the U.S. that doesn't have, yeah, like, any it's semblance fair. of it's service. It's fair. <laughs> um, so speaking of the pacing, I, so I actually really, you're right. The, the beginning of the movie is, like, quite slow because you're, like, what's happening? Like, it's kind of boring yeah. um but once they get to the train station these like small things start happening where you're like what huh yeah and it just like goes up from there and so like i really enjoy um the pacing of the movie because it like 20 minutes is fine to wait not like paranormal activity where it was like an hour in the last 20 minutes was <laughs> like the gut-wrenching terror this was like a nice build into into the end i think you're right that pacing was well thought out but for me it was that the reason it worked is that there were throughout the movie the pacing was kind of centered on which characters they were going to spotlight 
um, and like get you emotionally invested in because without the characters having depth you would not care because I will say like I really enjoyed Kingdom the other zombie show that is based in like historical times Korea um, but there were moments where I was like I can only watch so many scenes of zombies ripping apart people, man. Like, mm -hmm. it is violent, and, like, the first time you see that, it's, you know, it's, like, a visceral reaction, and, like, you're, like, ah. But after you watch just, like, five minutes consecutively of zombies attacking it's just, people. It's just, it's, like, saw. It's too much. It's white noise. Yeah. It's white noise. Yeah. And I'm, like, I don't care. And until they bring in, like, some actual plot. Um, so I think that's what really was done well in Trading of Busan is like, it's really easy to go really surface level on that many characters, especially how many they had. I mean, Ensemble. throughout the movie, yeah. it was probably like 15 people that you delved into in some respect. Mm -hmm. Um, and you actually cared about like all of them. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think that's a good, I guess, transition point to ask like what maybe you didn't like about the movie, like what wasn't good for you, what you thought could have been done better. I don't I don't know if anything could have been done better. Like I don't think I have any criticisms of the actual like filmmaking or like the plot or anything like that. Um I just didn't particularly like some of the characters. Like Honestly, I didn't enjoy Gong Yu's character at all. Like, I know he's the protagonist, and I know he, like, develops, you know, and becomes a better person by the end of the movie. But I'm like, you suck. Like, I really didn't really enjoy him. I have uh, I will question that. Is he a better person by the end of the movie? He still, he sacrificed himself for... Yeah, but that's, like, one thing in his being an It's athlete. his life that he <laughs> sacrificed, Jesse. God damn it. He was gonna die anyways. He got bitten. Yeah, but other people are in denial. A ton of people were in denial after fair. getting bitten. Fair, yeah. fair. Um, what, do, what did I think could have been... There were... The, so, this movie is a little bit older, but there were a few moments where I was like, this CGI did not... <laughs> like age well like there was a point where when the zombies first like start um multiplying in mass by killing other yeah. people and he's like running with his daughter and they're yeah. like chasing and they do that like they use that like really overused zombie thing where they're like so many of them that they're like piling yes. on top of each other i'm like it's a train girlfriend like there's not that many of them <laughs> like there can't be that many of them um yeah. that was the other hole i'm like there can't be that many zombies you probably could have killed most of them they, 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 they made it seem like there were so many. I'm like, it's not that... The train's not that big. Well, it had, like, 13 cars of people. Mm. <laughs> okay, Jesse. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I In, think it adds up. Once everyone has been bitten, it, it adds up. <laughs> that's... Okay, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> um, what else did I think was an interesting... I um I didn't quite get the part where they where they got into that intermediate station where like Gong Yu had called his buddy that was like oh we'll like find you you know yeah. a military uh, escort and they got there and they were all like all the military was well gone. I that was, was... Like, oh it was a well, little bit was... kind of it fueled the plot but I was kind of like okay that was like a little bit of a throwaway like oh it was it was yeah, totally a throwaway. It was a throwaway i think it was more a scene to show how shitty gong yu's character was still like in terms of like the way he looked at other people and was like out for number one because he oh, was yeah. willing to like fuck over the entire train oh yeah as long as he and his daughter i got, mean there's like, like a what there was a scene where his daughter was like you're a bad person yeah that <laughs> was it that was, was it yeah she that was, was that crying scene. and she's like you're a bad person <laughs> yes Oof. yes oh my gosh i don't know how i would feel if if i had offspring that said that to me i'd probably be like you're not in the will anymore <laughs> but what if it was true <laughs> like i think there's a difference between children saying mean things because they're being mean and you know it's not true versus like i think it hit harder for him because oh, yeah, he knew fair. it was true yeah <laughs> yeah like, he was like not a I mean, from what you can see before, you, it's, it very clearly establishes him as an absentee parent. Totally. Corporate totally. rating absentee parent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, there wasn't really anything. You know, yeah, because I didn't think so much of it was unrealistic. Because, for example, again, because I'm watching this other zombie show, like, 
literally now as well. Um, All of us are dead. In All of Us Are Dead, there are so many moments where I'm like, this is fucking unrealistic. Everyone just does parkour. All these students just like know parkour and they're like really good fighters and whatever. Like I felt like they were pretty realistic in Train to Busan of like there are a couple people who know how to fight, but it's not like they weren't doing like kung fu or anything. It yeah, was yeah. like it was like there's a boxer. He's just he's a big dude. So yeah, he can like take on people and like the baseball guy has a baseball bat and he's just swinging at people. It, it felt more realistic that like, it's still a little unrealistic, obviously that they were able to get through like four trains worth of zombies unscathed, but like the way they did it seemed pretty realistic. So I'm not, I don't have any qualms with like the realism for most, most of it. You know, that triggered one, one thing for me that was a uh, throwback to your question about what zombies would be like in real life. I don't mm. think zombies would be very good killers. I don't think <laughs> humans... Humans don't have very... Um, don't have a lot of jaw strength. And your teeth are not very mm. sharp either. Mm. So I don't think zombies would be very good at consuming live humans. Like, it's not very easy to eat uncooked meat. It's not like... Well, I don't think they're actually really eating. Like, I think they just bite and s- drink some blood. Like, it, it's almost like they're more like vampires. They do, our teeth are strong enough to break skin yes. because you see that in yeah. all of the sure. movies and shows. Yeah. But you're not really seeing them, like, chewing off an arm or anything like that. They're often just kind of, like, Fair. gnawing yeah. at the neck yeah, yeah. and kind of, like, yeah. I still think you will be not so difficult, necessarily. <laughs> yeah, because it's, like, if you think about, like, if you try to gnaw yourself through, like, a basic jacket... No matter how hard you try, I don't think you can. So it's like, I don't think yeah. he, I don't think humans are that scary. I mean, from a, if if I if you were to tell me to face a zombie human or like a zombie lion, I'd oh, be like yeah. zombie human. Give me the zombie human. <laughs> okay, let's talk about that because um, the beginning, one of the beginning scenes of Train to Busan is that there's the a zombie deer. Yeah. And I was like, ooh, because usually in a lot of these zombie movies and shows, they don't turn the animals, like only the humans are becoming zombies. Mm-hmm. Like, And I'm like, um, I don't think that's realistic. Like, I think the animals would definitely catch it and become zombies and they would be like you're saying way worse than the humans mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you at least we are humans we know like yes they turn to animalistic but they're still human based versus like animals that are unpredictable you'd be fucked yeah yeah even like but. a regular dog like regular exactly. dogs are safe because they're tamed but like yes. a regular dog that's rabid is not safe <laughs> yeah it's a it's a wolf essentially yeah basically yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so basically, that was that was my other thought that you triggered when you said that. Okay. Okay, well, I think we've picked apart a lot of the movie. Let's take it into our clothes. Um, fortune cookie clothes. Uh, <laughs> we were just going to say, what do we think? But I don't really think that's a great question. Do you have, like, a favorite moment from the movie? Um... I have to say, honestly, I really liked the very beginning when the train starts to leave because you Mm. just have these, like, small, um, you have these small unnerving moments, like when the, when patient zero gets onto the train and when the train starts to leave and you see the conductor looking at the platform and it's like, people Mm. are kind of just like, what's going on? It looks like a fight, basically. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then as the train finally pulls out, the conductor gets, like, overtaken by a zombie. So that though it's it goes from very kind of like could be normal situation to like oh uh, very quickly, which I I liked that like pacing and the usage of that. Yeah. And I also really liked I just remember because I just watched it um, when they when the first massacre starts to happen and they're like eating people and they have um, camera of the zombie running. It's like done really cool where it's like the zombie's head is shaking and it's like really close to it. So you're like, you're just like really in the moment. So Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I really liked um, those two, those two scenes. Nice. Nice. What about you? Honestly, for me, it was the shouting the baby's name from the boxer guy. It was so touching. I was like, "Ah, ah," because I thought he was saying her name. Like I thought he was just screaming like her name 
to be like, oh, I love you or whatever. But then it was like, that's the baby's name. I was like, <laughs> So a quick side note before we yeah. close it out. You, you watched it real language with subtitles, yeah. right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. The subtitles were not good. I mean... Even I, I knew they were not good. There was like a thing in the beginning where Gong Yu was talking to his like subordinate. And he's like, do you work for Lemmings? And I was like, <laughs> is this an insult? Like, what is this supposed to mean? At first, I had to, like, I was like, what's a, I didn't even know what a lemming was. Is that, what's like, a, a monkey? I think it's some kind of monkey. I don't know. But I was like, this is not a, this is, this is not translated accurately, as accurate I mean, as it look, could be. I look, I think subtitles have evolved. I still don't think they're perfect because there were still a shit, shit ton of people crapping on the Squid Game subtitles, but... 2016 versus 2021, 2022 is like a big difference, um, especially with the amount of international content that has come out since then. So I would hope it would be better. And it's not really the top of their priority list to redo the subs of a 2016 movie. So yeah, we get what we get. I guess. I guess. <laughs> okay. Well, listeners. Write us in with what you think of Train to Busan or your favorite other zombie show or movie because there are so many or your favorite content that features some of these actors that are recycled in these shows and movies because we love them and they're doing great work. Write us in at tell us where you're from at gmail.com or DM us on Instagram at where are you from pod. Um, and this is our last episode for a little <gasps> bit. Uh, we don't officially do seasons anymore because it was getting a little cray where we would have gotten to like season, season 52. 99. Yeah, really fast. But we still think for our mental health, it is still good for us to take a few weeks break between our kind of like batches of episodes. So we will be taking a few weeks off. Um, but in the meantime, when we're not doing episodes... I'll be making a bunch of TikTok shit. <laughs> We've been growing our TikTok. If you don't follow us yet, follow us there. It's at, but where are you really from on TikTok? Um, we'll be making content about Asian American stuff, me traveling in Asia, <laughs> which is what I'm about to do soon. Yes. A bunch of fun stuff. So follow and us there. Also, check out the YouTube where you can watch me spill drinks on myself almost every episode. Very true. <laughs> you are always missing some shenanigans if you're only listening to the audio because we are close. I have a zombie folks. bite. <gasps> Where? <laughs> Wait, what? What? I don't know. Oh, it's a mosquito? <laughs> no, it's a... It's a... It's a I, juniper bite? It's a blood draw gone wrong. <laughs> oh. oh, God. Well, I hope you don't turn into a zombie, Jesse. <laughs> All right, listeners. In the meantime... Hang out with us on social media, look back or listen back at our other episodes, write us in with feedback. We're always interested in kind of tweaking things based on what you think. Um, but thank you for listening. And until the next episode in a few weeks, bye, bitches. bitches.